Why is there an ambulance right now when I want to start recording? All right, it's gone. And hello everybody. Today we're going to make one last graphite video. We have a technique I wanted to try out and practice with you. After this one, we're going to maybe move on to ink and some cross hatching because there were a few people who requested more cross hatching and more ink techniques. In this video, I'm trying to use smudged graphite backgrounds to create atmosphere. It's something that I have done in also my animation studies, a technique that I have used to make storyboard thumbnails and to make them a little bit more atmospheric. Like a teacher told me to just scratch off some of uh, the graphite of my pencil, use it on my picture as a powder. And so you have a drawing and before you go in and shade with all the pencils, you have, you make one big flat surface of an evenly coated graphite gray. So you already have your middle tones and you're going to work out your shadows and as well as you're going to work out your light areas. Again, I'm going to make a little introduction about the materials and techniques I want to use. It's going to be a little play around for me to discover what certain stuff does and also for you to see what I plan on using and how you can use it. And after that, there's going to be at least one time-lapse video of a drawing, maybe a second one. There's that ambulance again. Anyway, come with me and let's draw together. So, we are here on that page again. And we're just going to use this space because I've already done some graphite exercise and explanations up here. This is from my first um, drawing video, so if you haven't seen it yet and you're interested in this, just uh, click on the very first video, which is not the introduction, the very first video, which is a lesson teaching. So we're going to reuse this space down here, because I don't have to take a whole page, just to try out some stuff. Now for the technique I want to try, we need preferably a needable eraser. Most of you should know that these exist and what they are for. They're like a very soft eraser, doesn't hurt the paper, which just, it, it takes up graphite and it's, it's just gobbling it up until it is too black to use and then you have to get a new one. But they are usually good for ages. And besides this, I have this kind of eraser, which is like pencil shaped eraser simply. And I even have a thinner one. If you don't have these, you can also use an eraser which still has some very good sharp edges because with these you can also get some details erased. And of course we're going to need graphite. Now I'm going to try two different methods, which is with this one I'm going to try to just scratch off some graphite powder and smudge it and with a soft 2B pencil, I want to try to make one flat surface and smudge it with my finger and just look which one gives which result. Now, to scratch off the graphite, you just need an instrument with a sharp edge. In this case, I have an artist's blade, a scalpel, however, you can also just use something like this. If you don't have any of these two, um, just use a normal kitchen knife. You just need to have something you can scratch some powder off. Usually you would have a drawing prepared under the stuff that you're scratching off. But for this little introduction now, I just want to see how they behave. And also you can just start your graphite drawing with this, so that you prepare your page before you even sketch on it. Now I just want to smudge this. I'm going to smudge it more or less in the shape of a square. And all I want to have is a very even surface to draw on. I might have put too much graphite in the middle there, but hey. 
maybe have a white sheet of paper ready on your side to just clean your fingers from time to time. Now I'm going to compare how I could create a soft background with first drawing it in with a pencil and then smudging it. If I had to guess, I would say that I will prefer the method with first scraping off your graphite and then smudging that rather than using a pencil and then smudging it because if you use your pencil on the page my guess would be that it already leaves some traces some marks on the paper that you maybe don't want to have in your drawing or maybe you want to have them that's it's totally up to you what i'm doing here it's it's never set in stone you can always make your own variations you can like something that i don't like it's uh, it's art it's uh, crafting it's very personal oh there's some sun coming out maybe my light settings will <laughs> change on the camera yeah as i thought this will leave already some structure on your paper before you even make the drawing maybe you want that like i said let me let me change my camera settings because the sun is really really coming out right now there you go these are my two squares and the thing you would do with this now or let me get my super gauntlet here you would just make your sketch on this dark middle tone that you have prepared i'm just going to make a sphere now just to see what happens and it's just the the easiest way to just test erasing and shading a good difference already is that you can see much more here than here so let's try to get a sphere here what happens So this would be the light source on our sphere. I'm just going to do the same left and right. If you push less on your netable eraser, you're going to take up less graphite, but also your kneadable, netable, however, eraser, it is um, going to be saturated with graphite. So you can see here, there is a lot of graphite on there. To get rid of that, you just net it into the eraser and you make yourself a new point to work with which has not so much graphite on it. Dude, sun, really? There was no sun when I was starting to record this and I thought it is going to be a cloudy day and stay that way. Now I really have to change my settings all the time. I'm very sorry for that. So if there is a lot of changing in the settings, you can see here on my hand, suddenly the sun came out on this very cloudy day. And I can tell you already that it's going to be gone in, in 15 minutes or 20 minutes, it's going to be gone. I could just stop recording, but I just want to stay in my flow now. Now I would like to make this sphere a little bit more visible on the outside. So I'm going to just take away some of this dark backdrop here. which is much more difficult with the other eraser. Just test all your media before you start doing something. I think in this case it's very important before you make a drawing to first play around with a lot of stuff that you have so that you know what might come to you. For example, now I already know that using a real eraser, like a hard eraser, it's going to give me hard edges. If I use the netable, like the soft eraser, I'm also going to be able to get a much softer, well, much softer edges. 
And that's what we want here. I don't know if you sometimes watch a few Proco videos. There's um, and there's one guy, I think he's always calling himself the shape carver. And somehow I'm also feeling now like I'm just carving out the shape of my sphere here. Even though I've drawn it in in the beginning. But I am carving, I'm carving in what I want to see. And you can always retouch the graphite and re-smudge it again if you overwork stuff. This sunlight is so heavy. And then again, you can also redefine your dogs with passing over with your pencil, making it dark wherever, dark wherever you want it to be dark. Make a light cast shadow here. And some more highlights on the top here. So this is more or less the method, the method I want to be using. Yeah, using an eraser really smudges the graphite a bit. And I also think that you're never going to be, get total white again when you do this. Which is really nice if you want to just make an atmospheric tonal drawing. Let me try what happens if I go there. Yeah, that's, that's a bit too much. I'm going to reset it, this here. So, this would be my sphere done with the dark backdrop. Just try the other one because it's a little bit different than my first one. So this is the one with the much softer backdrop, background. And in this one I feel much more like I'm really drawing in the sphere and I'm not um, playing so much with erasing values and creating values out of the dark shape that I had. So there will be two very different results here, I believe. Because with the other one, I already had really dark shadows and here I have to produce the dark shadows much more. And you can just, like I said, always re-smudge the picture to get back into this tonal feeling. I know there were a lot of art teachers always telling me you should not smudge. Smudging is cheating and a good artist doesn't smudge. He does everything with, uh, with his pencil, with texture, with uh, blending and all the stuff. But, you know, I, th I think teachers always say that in the beginning to avoid you being lazy and just like when you're a young artist and you start, for example, trying to make portraits of uh, real life people, you tend to get a habit of smudging everything just because it produces a nice effect and you can cheat your way out of working with the pencil altogether. So this is not me telling you smudge everything. This is me telling you use the smudging and the unclean way of working with graphite to make your drawings look a little bit more painterly. So it's not so, it's less controlled than if you do everything with pencil only and have no smudges. I mean, if you look at oil paintings, there are always areas which are neatly worked, well, not all. it depends on the artist, but usually you have areas that are worked neatly 
and you also have areas where you can see the brush strokes, where you can see the roughness, that it is a painting in fact. So it is about mixing the two. I have to say this one doesn't is this one nearly isn't as fun as this one. I really like it more to have a really dark and soft backdrop with the with the scraped graphite. Just because I can do much more with the eraser here to get my tones than preparing a really light backdrop with a pencil. So I'm going to go for the scraping method and then using much more of the knitable eraser and much less of the pencil. So now that you have seen what I want to do with you, which technique I want to use for this specific exercise, come with me into a time lapse and you can choose what you want to do if you want to look at something and draw something in real life or if you want to use a photograph that's your choice or even do both as I do and now I'm going to wait for the sun to be completely gone from my drawing corner again before I make the time lapse video because it's really annoying to always reset the camera so that you can see what I am doing Okay, 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 okay. First things first, there's just going to be one drawing in this time-lapse video. I have this footage now lying around for some time and I really want to edit it before my week is over because I promised you that you will have one video per week. So I decided to leave it at one drawing and I'm going to make the second drawing in another time-lapse video for next week. So at least like this you get your video on time. Now for the drawing I have decided with this one to start drawing something that I am um, looking at, it's like an object from real life and just to show you how simple it is to find something that is interesting to draw I took a color tube and for my sake I just ignored all the markings that were on the tube so all the labels, all the little warning signs and all the stuff, the writing, I ignored all that and I just took the form with the lights and the darks. Now I started this by sketching in a light sketch of my tube just because I was wondering if I make a gray background with graphite and sketch on it and if I make mistakes and I want to erase those, like if you, if you start drawing you're really rough so there's likely that you make mistakes and it's good that you make mistakes because by making mistakes and drawing the wrong lines you can find the right lines. But if you have a gray background color, if I erase the lines, I also erase my background color and then it, it gets just weird and messy. So I wanted to have one rough idea of my uh, tube that I'm going to be drawing and then make the uniform gray background. And I have to say this drawing was really really fun. It was also a little bit difficult, like exhausting. Also again due to the fact that I haven't done this in quite a while. And the more I do this video series, the more I realize that there are so many basic drawing exercises that since I finished art school and started um, animation or concentrating more on single projects, that I really neglected. So this is not like riding a bicycle. These are skills that you get but you can get rusty. So I think my drawing is okay, it is uh, came out good but it wasn't as easy for me as it used to be. So bear that in mind um, if you think you you're good at something and stop practicing it. Uh, if you do that for years and years and years it will come back to haunt you. <laughs> Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention, and I'm just going to mention this um, once every few videos because I think if I say it too often it just gets annoying. If you like what I'm doing here, these little video classes, um, I have a Patreon account where you can go and support me with a few euros. You won't get any special content because I actually and honestly think that I won't have the time to make extra content for Patreon. 
but I just wanted to have a place where you could support the making of these videos. I mean, I do them for free. I do them for fun as well and for educational purposes. Like um, I'm doing these exercises anyway. And if I can explain a little bit what I am doing here and someone else can profit and learn something by me explaining my stuff and uh, trying to to get back into drawing practice, then that's uh, the best result I can hope for. But anyway, just to say there is a Patreon account and if you like, the possibility is there and uh, yeah, would be very grateful for that. Enough about Patreon. I think we are nearly finished with this drawing. As you can see in the end again, I erased the graphite background on the left side where I was having my light source. And no, this is not an imagined light source. I really had an object lying in front of me with a light source from the left because that's my streaming light, my recording light. And I simply used that one. The reason I did not include the object that I was drawing is for me to stress less. So the goal of this exercise is not really to copy one to one what you're seeing, but to try to evaluate light and dark, just to draw, to practice, to watch, to learn. And it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be done and practiced and like always repeated. I hope you liked this little video. I will probably see you next time in the second time lapse where I'm going to make a drawing from a photograph. And after that, I bet with you that we're going to start some crosshatching. See you soon. Bye.